So I am here in steamy Bali, Indonesia. It is uh, absolutely stifling hot out here, but I uh, figured this would be a, a nice uh, backdrop to do a video. So definitely wanted to take advantage as I'm in this uh, incredible resort in this amazing location. Um, here with my friend Daniel Cordan. We're actually running a workshop in 2024. So it's kind of showing me around and um, creating some, uh, some content uh, around this workshop, which has just been an, an absolute blast, a, a dream come true, honestly. And I haven't made a start to finish editing video in quite a while. These are some of the most requested videos that uh, I hear about. And I wanted to go ahead and do this uh, now or take it the, uh, this opportunity to do this because this is one of my uh, favorite photos from this trip. The trip's been absolutely spectacular. It's been more of a, an Indonesian uh, tour as opposed to just a, a Bali workshop. We've been to um, Sumba. We've been to... Um, uh, I'm gonna, I forget the name of many of the locations. I know we're going to, to Komoda, and there's about three or four other spots. We're going to stay on a, on a boat for a couple nights in some location. Uh, I'll put some of the, the uh, destinations on the screen here. But it's been an absolute uh, incredible, incredible uh, vacation, honestly, for myself. So, but I wanted to uh, show you this image here. So this photograph is one from, uh, from yeah, this is from Bali. And I've been to so many locations, I can't even keep track of what is where. But this is something that I'm really, really proud of. So first thing I want to do in, in all of my photographs, and as you can see, this is edited in Lightroom. I use Capture One a lot of times. Sometimes I use Lightroom. I use Photoshop. I use all three of them in, in different capacities capacities, just depending on a specific image. But for this particular um, uh, image, I'm only going to use Lightroom, maybe a little bit of Photoshop. We'll see. But what I would like to do always first is just to go ahead and balance out the exposure, because you can tell that this image is extremely, extremely dark. I underexposed it on purpose because I wanted to make sure that I protected all the highlights because there was a lot of dynamic range in the scene. The shadows were very dark. The highlights in the sky were very bright. The blowing out the highlights are more detrimental to the overall photograph than under exposed shadows you can't recover overexposed highlights so definitely wanted to make sure I protected those and as you can see I definitely did so this is a panorama so I want to uh, I'm going to do the other image in just a second but first things first is I want to go ahead and just balance out the exposure so usually we'll start with the shadows we'll bring up the black point a touch I'm going to bring down the highlights a little bit bring down the whites a touch I'm going to boost up the exposure, and now you can really see this photo starting to, to come to life. You can see how much the, the histogram filled out as well. So let's do a couple more things here. I'm not going to bring down the whites quite as much. I think about right there. Bring up the black point a little bit more. I usually like not having a true black point in photographs. I like having kind of a, a softer black point because I think it, it creates a more, I guess, kind of a filmic look, just a more subdued, more uh, kind of ethereal and dreamy look to it. So I'm going to bring the, the blacks up quite a bit. Maybe bring up the shadows just a little bit more as well. It's kind of hard to see the screen, honestly. It, it's so bright behind me and we're bright outside. So maybe this wasn't the best location to do this. But nevertheless, it's probably more uh, interesting to, uh, I guess, see the backdrop, backdrop here as opposed to in my hotel room. But I, as a, at this point, I feel like the overall exposure is pretty well balanced. And as you can see, this is where we started. This is where we're at right now, before and after. So I think that that is starting to look pretty good. Maybe bring the highlights down just a bit more. So balancing the overall exposure is always the number one thing that I want to start off with. After that, I usually will try and figure out the, uh, the white balance. And one of my favorite things to do is just come up here to white balance, keep it simple, and hit auto. Now, I very rarely will just take those results but it gives me a kind of a directional idea as to what this, you know, where this image might want to be taken. So plus 14 on the temp, minus 25 on the tint. I think I'm going to bring this down a little bit. I don't want it to be that warm. And I want to re retain some of that magenta as well. So I'm thinking about right there, looks pretty good. I actually imported this image in Capture One at first, process, not process it, but I converted the raw file in Capture One and then brought it over to Lightroom. That's why you don't see the actual uh, white balance values here. Now I'm gonna bring down the highlights quite a bit now to about somewhere there and bring the shadows up a little bit more to about there, I think is starting to look pretty good right there. So since this is a pano, here's the other image right here. So library, here is the other one. I am going to just go ahead and sync these. Just hit synchronize. 
and now we have both of these together. And you can see that there's not a huge difference, but I wanted to make sure that I capture this beautiful tree because I like the shape right through here. So I want to capture that, and then I wanted to capture some of this area here. So I'm going to come back to library, have both of them highlighted. I'm going to right click, photo merge, panorama. And let's see, cylindrical, no, spherical. That is the way to go. Uh, boundary warp, do we wanna, yeah, let's do it. Just uh, in the essence of time, we'll see how it does. Fill edges. Mm, I think that did okay, honestly. Yeah, we'll leave it right there. Never use, I never use auto settings. I don't use hit create stack, and we'll just hit merge. And then this is gonna head and stitch those images together and give me a much wider field of view as opposed to what I could capture with my wide angle lens, which is 16 millimeters, which is pretty wide, but it still wasn't wide enough to capture this scene as I wanted it to be captured. And here is that stitched image here. So if we go back and look at the other versions, this is what the pano, and now we have it all together, which looks really, really nice. And I think Lightroom did a very good job stitching this together. I'll probably clean this side up, clean these branches off. There's a little area right here where I think that a person's leg might have been there, or maybe a camera bag. There's a little water bottle here. I want to clean up all of those things. But overall, I think this is a very good starting point. So go back to the develop module. And what I am going to do, we already have our balance, our, our uh, overall exposure balance. We have our white balance balanced. Now I want to go down to just the overall like softening of the image. I like always like to bring down clarity and boost up texture just a little bit. So I'm going to bring the clarity down quite a bit, maybe around 25. We'll bring the texture up just a little bit, about right there. Bring the haze down just a little bit, nothing crazy like that. But I like to bring it down to around, you know, minus 10 to maybe minus 15, just depending on the overall image. I think that looks pretty good. And, and the reason why is because it just softens the overall photograph down. It just creates this kind of dreamy, just very subdued, almost kind of painterly effect. And I, and I really like the way that looks. And let's see where we started. So, I mean, total transformation in this photograph so far. Maybe bring that dehaze back just a little bit to about right there. Not gonna do anything with vibrance or saturation right now. I am gonna come down to detail and let's, uh, let's add a fair amount of sharpening here. Let's mask this sharpening out because I only want it to be in the most important details of the overall photograph. I don't want it to be in the sky. And everything that's in white here, that is going to receive the sharpening and everything that is in black is not going to receive the sharpening. So when you have the masking at zero, everything gets the sharpening because it's all white. As you slide this masking over, and I'm holding down the option key on a Mac to see this, now everything in white is going to get that sharpening. So I basically just want to make sure I get rid of the sky. So I think that that looks good. Maybe we can bring up the detail a little bit. We can bring up that sharpening just a touch more because it's very, very refined where we put it. I think that looks good right there. Very nice. Tone curve. Let's put uh, an anchor point here in the darker midtones and put an anchor point here in the brighter midtones. And basically what I want to do is create a, a little bit of additional contrast, but also kind of lift up those blacks as well, lift up those uh, the deepest blacks in this overall photograph, really the shadows, just to kind of add to that softening look. So I'm going to take this, oops, Command Z, take this right here and let's bring this up to maybe about there. And then maybe bring up this highlight just a touch to about there. Let's toggle this on and off. Yeah, so that added to that look even more. I think that looks good. I'm going to come up here to global contrast and just kind of bring that up a little bit as well. And if you're never not sure where a specific slider should go, if you hold down the shift key and click on any slider, Lightroom will automatically adjust that slider based off of the histogram, based off of what Lightroom thinks is an appropriate level for that slider to be adjusted. Now, obviously it's not always correct. It's not really looking at your photograph. It's just looking at the histogram but it's great for directional purposes. So if you're ever confused, you don't know which way to move a slider, just do the shift double click trick and it'll automatically adjust it for you. And I'll show you real quick. So let me reset contrast, holding down the shift key, double click, and basically light missing plus five. So I think it should be a little bit more, but you can do that with any of these. Shift double click on the blacks, brings it down to negative 100. I definitely don't want to do that. But like I said, good for directional purposes. 
Now, we did the tone curve, we did detail. Um, I definitely want to add a subtle vignette here, maybe to about right there, I think looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring down the, uh, the highlights a little bit more. Somewhere about there, I think looks pretty good. And let's toggle this edit on and off. So this is before and after, before and after. And I really, really like the way this is coming together. I love all the light right here. The light on the, in this image is absolutely beautiful. And the girl's hair here and the, uh, the, the tree house in the background. This is just absolutely incredible. So I am going to come up here to the filter section. So this is where I want to start kind of playing with light. I'm not really going to do much dodging and burning on specific areas, but I do want to emphasize, emphasize the areas of light, the sun coming through, and also emphasize areas of shadows as well. So I'm going to come up here to radial gradient. I'm going to make the image a little bit smaller on my screen. And I'm going to just draw a big radius right through here, really large radius all the way across this area. Make the image even smaller. Something like this. I think looks pretty good right there. Now let's make the image fit on the screen once again. And let's go ahead and go over here to dehaze and let's soften this area up even more. I'm gonna bring down the clarity quite a bit there. Maybe not quite that much. We can warm this up a little bit. You can actually pick a warm tone. Actually, I like that better. So let me go back here to temp, temp double click that, go to color. We can, and as you can see, see what's happening in that area. Definitely don't want to go overboard, but something about, I think right there looks pretty good. Let's toggle this on and off just so we can see before and after before and after. And if you look at the thumbnail up here as I toggle this on and off, that really tells the story. And really what I want to do, sorry, it's really hot, <laughs> is I just want to emphasize that area of the sun coming through there. I really want the, the viewer to be able to feel that. So I think that that looks good. I think I'm actually going to come back here and make it even larger. So maybe something like that. Uh, what is the feather at? Oh yeah, let's make the feather, that transition zone, even softer. Let's bring up the exposure a little bit. Go back here to fit. Toggle this on and off one more time before and after, before and after. That's a great technique that you can do in Lightroom. You don't have to do that in Photoshop just to kind of really just bring out that, uh, the, the light that's happening in a photograph. Now I'm gonna come over here to, whoops, come over here to mask. Let's open this up. Let's just name this uh, Sun Radius. Hit OK. I'm going to hit Create New Mask. This time I'm going to do, um, let's just stick with Radial Gradients again, but this time I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to drag this one over here on this side. So maybe like this. Stretch it out to about here. I think that that looks pretty good. Uh, do we want to add a color here? I don't think we do. I really just want to just decrease the exposure there just a little bit. Uh, we can soften down this area as well because we're darkening it, darkening it down. We ultimately are drawing the viewer's attention kind of away from that area. I talk about this in videos quite a bit, how light transition is a great way to draw the viewer's eye through a photograph. So if you have an area of darkness in the foreground, an area of brightness in the background, that light transition is naturally going to draw the viewer's eye through the, the, the photograph. So let's toggle this on and off. So that's before and after. Very, very subtle. Let's, uh, it's so subtle, I don't even know if you can even see it at home. <laughs> but let's, uh, and you can see this transition here, how soft it is. Let me hit uh, show overlay here. You can see how soft that is. Let's bring it down just a little bit more to maybe somewhere right there, I think looks pretty good. And let's toggle all of these masks on and off. So this is before and after, before, and after, I'm gonna to tone this sun radius down just a little bit. And I think that that looks pretty good right there. Now, let me go back to the basic section. I'm gonna bring down these highlights quite a bit more, bring down the overall exposure just a little bit more as well. I think that's really starting to, to come together. Hit fit on the screen again. And let's toggle the overall edit on and off. So this is before and after, before, 
and after. I think that that looks really nice. So that's just a, a real quick technique. Well, actually, let me just do one thing here. How I would remove these right here, really simple. Let's come over here to the Band-Aid icon. Let's, I love the, uh, I shouldn't say I love it. I really like the content aware fill right here that Lightroom introduced recently. It definitely doesn't work all the time, but it works pretty well. So let's just increase the size here. And we're just going to just kind of paint right across this area. And let's see how it did. And it did pretty good. Let's do this area right here as well. Do one more swipe here and close that down and it looks pretty nice so that is a, a real quick edit you know 15 minutes i probably would normally end up taking this over into to photoshop and doing a couple more tweaks but so much of that heavy lifting i'd say 80 percent of the heavy lifting was all done inside a lightroom of course i would remove that water bottle that is right down here which we can go ahead and remove as well band-aid content aware fill don't need it to be that big there something like this and then we'll just do one quick swipe there and see how it does and close it down and nobody would ever know that that area is even there so once again before and after before and after and i think this photograph is this is one of those photographs you capture on a trip that just really gets you excited if i don't get any photographs on the rest of this trip i'd be perfectly fine this is enough for me and i'm really happy with the way this came out so quick 15 minute edit. I hope you did enjoy it. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll definitely get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you taking out a little bit of time and spending it here with me today in beautiful Bali, Indonesia. And I will see you all next Wednesday.